Hey guys, welcome to another algorithm video. Uh, so I've been away for the last two weeks. I was actually prepping up for an exam, so I don't really have a lot of time to edit videos. Uh, making the video is not actually the problem. The actual problem is planning and editing, especially with educational content. You want to make sure that you're passing the information as effectively as possible in a very short time frame. So I hope you understand that uh, I had about a two week hiatus. Uh, so now let's get into the video. We're going to use a very unconventional method to solve this question. So this question wants us to find the majority element in an array, and we're assured that the majority element will appear more than half n times, where n is the total number of elements in the array. Now, there are a lot of ways you could solve this question. There's the brute force approach, where you iterate through the array twice and count the occurrences of every single element, which runs in O of n squared time. Or you can also use the hash map solution, where you only loop through the array once, but you keep a hash map of the number of times you've come across every single element. Uh, this algorithm runs in O of n time, but also takes up extra space, and we don't want that. So how do we solve this question in O of n time and no extra space? After all, we definitely have to search through the array, right? Yeah, and you might think that there is a bottleneck with the searching algorithm that we use. Uh, when you look at computer science searching algorithms, there is sort of a hegemony of linear search and binary search. But I'm going to introduce to you another searching algorithm that isn't mainstream, but it's also really fast. And that's the Boyer-Moore voting algorithm. They also have another algorithm that's Boyer-Moore um, string search algorithm. It's kind of different from the Bo uh, Boyer-Moore voting algorithm. Ultimately, what this algorithm does really well is to search for a suffix in a string, or in this case, an array. So let's go through an example and see how this algorithm works. Consider the following array of elements 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2. And we want to return the uh, majority element in this array. In this case, it's clearly 2. So how this algorithm works is that we're going to iterate through the array in one pass, and then we're going to pick a potential majority element preferably the first element in the array. And while we iterate through the array, whenever we come across that same element, the potential majority element, we increment a counter variable by one. And whenever we come across anything else that's not the potential majority element that we've chosen, we decrement the counter variable by one. That's simply it. That's the core of this algorithm. Now, there's a slight caveat we have to change the potential majority element whenever the counter is zero. Whenever the counter is zero, we're going to pick a new potential majority element, and that would be the current element that we're looking at, the current element that we're iterating through. So why do we pick a new potential majority element when the counter is zero? Well, that simply means that so far we've seen other elements that appear more times than the potential majority element that we initially chose, and that element can no longer be the majority element, since there are other elements that either appear more than that element or, or equal to the number of times the potential majority element appears. Now, it's going to be very clear as we go through the example, so let's do that. So let's reiterate what we're going to do. We're going to pick a potential majority element, and that's preferably the first number in the array. And while we iterate through the array, we're going to do two things. Whenever we see a number that's the same as our current potential majority element, we increment a counter variable, and when we see anything else, we decrement the counter variable by one. Increment by one and decrement by one. And whenever counter variable is zero, we pick a new potential majority element. We're going to keep track of the state of our variables using this table right here. And uh, this column represents the current element we're iterating through the number. And that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2. And then this candidate column, it's going to represent the potential majority element. I put it here as PME for potential majority element. I realized that candidate is easier to understand. and it's quite shorter for code, so let's go with that. And count 
is going to keep track of the state of our counter variable. So we're iterating through the array and we're currently at number one. So we pick that as our potential majority element. That's our candidate. And we increment the counter by one. So count is now one. And then we get to two. So now our current number is two. Our candidate is still one. Our potential majority element is still one. But now our counter gets decremented by one since we've seen another number that's not the potential majority element. So we decrement the counter by one, so counter now becomes zero. And now we move on to the next iteration. We are at three. Our number is three. Our candidate, now that the counter is zero, we have to pick a new candidate for the potential majority element. Because what this means is that up until this point, we've come across another element that appears the same times, the same number of times as the original potential majority element, which means that this number one can no longer be the potential majority element since we've already seen two and they both uh, occur once in the array. So up until this part, we don't have a potential majority element. So our count is zero. So now we have to pick a, a new potential majority element and that would be the current number that we're iterating at. So current candidate is three, and now we increment the count by one, and then we get to two. At this point, we realized that we have a new number, which means we have to decrement the count. So current number is two, our candidate is still three, but our counter now becomes zero, because we've seen two, and that is different from three, so we have to decrement the counter by one. And then we get to two. So here, our current number is two. Our candidate has to change because our counter is zero. So our candidate now becomes two. And we increment the counter by one. And now we get to the last two. Our current number is two. Our candidate is still two. And since two is still the candidate, we increment the counter variable by one, so now counter becomes two. And we're done iterating through the array. Now we just have to return the current candidate that we have. Whatever is stored in the candidate variable, that's what we return as two. And that's the majority element. Now, the core of this algorithm lies on the fact that the majority element is gonna appear more than n over two times where n is the number of elements in the array. So here, n is six, and two appears one, two, three, four times, and that's greater than three. So the reason for this, the reason why this algorithm works is that, take for example, you're decrementing a counter variable every time you see another number that's different from the potential majority candidate, and then you're incrementing every time you see a potential majority candidate. Now that potential majority candidate is gonna appear at least more than n over two times. So let's say in this case, it's four. So for four instances, you're gonna keep adding. And for two instances, you're gonna keep decrementing. So after iterating through the array, your counter variable is still gonna be over zero. At the same time, you do have a potential majority element at the same time you have a candidate. Now let's take for example, this wasn't the case. Let's say the last twos here were replaced by say four and five. Let's say this was four and this was five. So when we're at four, the current number that we're dealing with is four and our candidate, let's see, our candidate should now be four since the count at this point is zero, so we have to pick a new candidate for potential majority element. So let's pick four. And now our current variable becomes one since we increment it. And now we get to five. When we get to five, our number is five. Our candidate is still four, but we have to decrement the counter since we're looking at a different number. We're looking at something other than our current candidate that we have. So counter variable now becomes zero. Now we're done iterating through the array with the counter variable at zero and candidate at four. 
this is not going to work because we don't have a majority element in this array since there is no element that appears more than half n times. So that's the logic behind the solution. As long as there is an element that occurs more than half n times, this algorithm is going to work. So let's go back. Yeah, when this was 2, we're here. Our candidate now becomes 2. And then we increment the count plus 1. And then we get to the final 2. Our candidate still 2. We're looking at the same number. Our number is equal to the candidate. So now we increment the count. And our count becomes 2. And then we return 2. So 2 would be our final answer. And that would be the majority element of this array, which is correct. So what's the time and space complexity of this algorithm? Well, for time complexity, it runs in O of n time, since we're only iterating through the array once. And for space complexity, it's uh, O of 1 space, since we're doing everything in place. So that's how we solve this question. And these types of algorithms are really difficult to come up with in the interview. And frankly, no one's actually expecting you to come up with these algorithms in the interview. In my opinion, if you would do the hash map solution, you would be okay, as long as you're capable of um, interpreting the trade-offs between uh, time and space and why you chose to use a hash map, that's totally fine. This is kind of like just for information purposes and knowledge purposes and also for, you know, for fun. So let's dive into the code for this algorithm. All right, so the code's going to be very short. The very first thing we want to do is to declare our counter variable, initialize it to zero, and then we also declare an integer variable for the candidate. That's the potential majority element. And then for now, it's just going to be null. And then we iterate through all the elements in the nums array in one pass. And uh, when we get to the very first element, we pick that as the candidate. So we say if count is equal to zero, then we set our candidate to this number. So that's fair enough. So if the count is not equal to zero, we have to either decrement or increment the counter variable. So we say count is equal to count plus, um, it's either going to be one or minus one. So it's only going to be one if the current number that we're looking at is equal to the candidate. If this is the case, then we should return one. Otherwise, it should be minus one. So what this does is the statement reads as count equals count plus something. So now the something is either going to be one or minus one. So it's going to return one if the current number that we're looking at is a candidate. If we're looking at the same number as a candidate, then we increment the uh, counter variable. If we're looking at anything else, we decrement the counter variable. So otherwise, decrement the counter variable. So at the end of everything, all we have to do now is to return candidate. So return candidate. That's pretty much it. Let's run this. Oh, this should be an integer. I run this again. Uh, it's accepted. Let's submit this. And yeah, it's successful. It's not as fast as I expected it to be. I don't know. Maybe it's because uh, of my network connection. Let me try to submit it again. Uh, a little better, but it's still slow. Not as slow as the other um, the other solutions that I've tried in the past. I think this one was the hash map solution. And as you can see, it's significantly faster than the hash map solution. So yeah, that's how you solve the majority element question using the Boyer Moore uh, voting algorithm. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Comment down below if you have something to say and share this video around the community. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.